parts separated into different components the scope the barrel upper receiver and lower receiver all these parts I printed in PLA plus I'll link the files below along with some materials We'll start off by assembling the lower scope ring. Because this part has to be epoxied, we want to get it gluing first so it can be drying while we work on the rest. This is 5 minute epoxy, but I'm going to leave mine clamped for at least half an hour before I try to paint it. I'm going to modify the design a little bit right here. This is the center screw that holds the scope onto the rail that goes on the side of the blaster. I'm going to add a drywall screw to it, a one inch long one. That way I can screw it in and screw it out. That way I can take the scope on and off if I want to. Here we have the pieces separated for paint. Most of the large pieces will be painting flat black. Some smaller accent pieces will be metallic silver. And then we'll go with brown for the handles. As silver paint is dried, I'm going to go back over with a light coat of the flat black paint and then right after I spray it on, I'm going to take it in a rag and wipe it back off. This is going to give all the silver pieces like a really worn metallic look. After the paint is dried, we can move on to assembly. I'm going to slide this range adjustment nub over the rear sight blade, and then we can glue the rear sight blade assembly into the upper receiver. We can grab the bolt and go ahead and slide it in the upper receiver. There's nothing to hold it in place, so it's just going to be sitting in there for now. Now moving to the lower receiver, we can start working on the trigger assembly. I took a little rubber band and looped it from the top of the trigger to the rear pin in the trigger pack. This gives some tension to the trigger. I had to make a little chamfer right here on the crossbar of the trigger pack. Whenever I tried to slide the upper receiver on, it got hung up on it, so it helped a lot once I added the chamfer. The hammer is held in place by a pin. 
and the safety just snaps into place. I just have to trim a little bit of plastic off the edge of the safety to make it snap in. hammer assembly indexes off the T-slots and slides into the back of the lower receiver. Once you see that it fits, you can just add some hot glue to hold it in place. The upper assembly should just slide easily right on the lower. Push it all the way forward. If you don't have it far enough forward, the hammer won't go all the way forward. You may need to cut that chamfer on your trigger pack. I had to modify the heat sink just a little bit. I had to cut some off the side to make space for the scope mounting bar. The heat sink and the magazine base plate are just hot glued into place. The flash hider slides right over the barrel and then it can be pinned into place. The upper receiver can't be removed from the lower unless you remove the barrel, so I'm just going to install the barrel with a friction fit, just wrapping a bit of duct tape around it to make it tight in the upper receiver. If you don't care to remove the upper receiver, then you can just glue the barrel into place. Now we're going to start on the scope, we're just going to glue the eyepiece and the objective lens into each end. Now we'll add the elevation adjustment assembly. Upper scope rings are next, and those will interface with the lower scope ring. Now drive the pins halfway through the scope mount. 
that way they protrude about the same amount on each side. If everything fits correctly, hot glue it down. Add hot glue to your screw heads and glue them onto the pins on either side of the scope rail. You won't be able to get the scope on with that rear screw head there. So once the hot glue is cooled, pop it off, you can slide your scope on. Now take that screw that we modified with the sheetrock screw and screw it in. That'll hold the scope in place. My pins were a little long, so I had to grind them down a little bit to make them fit. Just add hot glue to both the handle scales and you can sandwich the handle in between. The little studs and the grips don't need to be glued into place, the friction should hold them in just fine. This is the locking stud for the bolt. The bolt won't come out when it's in place. I'm just adding a little bit of tape to it so it fits snugly in there, but I am able to take it out if I want to move the bolt. There's a little bit of space down inside the magwell that you can access when the bolt's open. Perfect place for your skittles. The last step is to take just a tiny bit of silver paint on a dry rag and wipe it over all the raised areas. This will give a lot more depth to the blaster's appearance. our completed DL44. Overall took about 30 hours of print time and about 3 hours of assembly. Links to materials and the STL files are down in the description. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.